<laughs> Tariq Cole, Deontay Roberts, Bless on Austin. Guys, welcome to Chicago. Great to have you here with us. Let's focus on your football team. You made some real positive steps toward the end of last year. We were talking about this with Coach Ash earlier, winning three of your last seven games, really a lot more competitive down the stretch than you had been the previous couple of years. So, Bless, I'll start with you. You guys can work down the line here. How do you have that momentum carry forward? What do you need to do to capture that and bring it into this year? You just have to be, you just have to keep being consistent. I mean, maintain the culture that we've been working so hard to build, first and foremost. And what is that culture? Give me some details on, on what it is that you think improved. What I think improved is our consistency and understanding what's needed out of us. You know, the expectations have definitely rise, being that we're much older now. We understand what Coach Ash wants. It's his third year in the, uh, you know, in the, at the program. So, I mean, it's pretty big for us, you know, to improve on what we did last year. Deontay? Uh, you know, I can say the strides that we're making uh, for this upcoming season, I have to say, is, you know, improving on our techniques and, you know, fundamentals and stuff like that. You know, that's really important. You know, everybody's talented in the Big Ten, you know. So what's going to separate you? You know, what's going to separate the guys individually, you know, the team as a whole? So, you know, if you focus on that, then, you know, you, the end results will come. How do you see it, Tariq? Uh, I feel like the leadership is something that's been a huge detail that Coach asked for, looked at it uh, for us to see. Um, we, we haven't had leadership in the past couple of years, and the guys, the older guys now, the ones, the fifth years, the uh, four-year starters, whatever, whatever, they need to be the biggest leaders that we have on the team. Olan D-line starts up front, and we need those two units to be the best. Now, when you say you haven't had leadership, you're just saying you haven't had good leadership? I mean, have there been guys who have tried to step up and they, they just weren't the right guys? Yes, sir. I think that's uh, the biggest thing that's been the difference between us winning a lot more games than we, than we have been in the past. Uh, leadership just wasn't there. Um, this year, these, this, this past couple months, leadership has shown up in bigger ways than I thought I've seen personally in the past couple years. Give me a sense of something that you can put a finger on and you say, that's the leadership we need. Uh, first of all, Olan Dilan. Uh, guys like Kevin Wilkins, uh, me, Jonah Jackson, uh, Zach Heeman were guys that lead the team. John Badeke just lead the offensive line and defensive line. They're, they're the biggest, they're the oldest, uh, strongest, fastest. Guys know what they're doing. They've played a lot of ball. They, they have what it takes to be a leader, and they've shown those leadership skills throughout the time during spring ball and towards the end of the season, and they have affected us in positive ways. Deontay, bless on, would you guys agree with that? Is, has leadership improved on this team? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. You know, um, speaking as a co-captain last year, you know, uh, where you see the leadership, you know, make a stride is um, it's not one guy just talking, you know, it's uh, multiple guys or a group of guys, you know, saying things. The younger guys understanding and knowing what the expectations are and, you know, what the culture is and what we expect out of everybody. You know, we're not holding one guy different from another guy. Everybody's up to the same standards. So, you know, if we're all on the same page, then you're going to see the strides that's made. Bless, you're coming off of uh, an injury. You missed the last eight games of last year. You've had a bunch of guys up here today who are rehabbing injuries. Where are you in that process? Um, that process is over in there. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty much ready to start camp. You're ready to go? I'm ready to go 100%. Yes, okay. Sir. You, As you watched last year, this defense got better and better. You were kind of on the, on the sidelines during yeah. the point where they made some of these dramatic improvements. What did you see from your vantage point as to why you guys were getting better? I mean, I feel like we just understood that we had what it takes to play in this league. And as soon as we got the first one, you know, I feel like guys, that's the only thing we needed for guys to understand, like, hey, we could play with anybody in this league. You know, our younger guys as well, they had the confidence now, you know, to play because most of them played last year, you know, whether it was special teams, contributing there, or on offense or defense. So that's a big thing for us. I look at your secondary, I think you have a chance to be one of the better ones in the Big Ten. Give people who don't have a sense of this Rutgers defensive backfield about the personnel tell them you know w what they need to know i mean what you guys need to know is we kind of giving our coaches headaches about how they could get all of us on the field at one time <laughs> i mean and i think that's a pretty good problem to have as a coach you know when you get to that point in your program where you're trying to figure out ways to get all the dbs on the field at the same time i mean that's pretty special you lost a couple of, of mainstays up front on your defense mm -hmm. in kamoko Teray, sebastian joseph so now 
you're going to have to replace those guys. You have a good vantage point of it from your linebacker spot. Who stood out on that defensive line? Uh, I definitely have to say Kevin Wilkins, you know, guys like him, John Badeke. Uh, those guys, you know, they've been in the program for four years. We all play together, so we kind of understand and know what the tendencies are and what we expect from each other. Uh, we all gel the same, you know, so, you know, if something's going wrong, I'm going to say something. If, you know, something's going wrong with me, he's going to say something. And you've seen those guys making, you know, great improvement in, you know, their fundamentals and the techniques, so stuff like that. When you're seeing things like that, then, you know, something going on. So now you've got this foundation in place where you guys know you can be a better defense. So how do you go from being a respectable Big Ten defense to an elite Big Ten defense? Uh, you know, it, it, it takes one day at a time. You know, uh, you're going to take one game at a time, continue to improve on the little things, uh, action, you know, come to day, uh, practice and stuff like that. You know, taking one day at a time, basically. So if you focus on that, then, you know, it will take care of itself. Terry, Coach Ash was talking to us earlier and essentially said, look, offense has been a bigger challenge than defense for whatever reason in this rebuild. Now you bring in a new offensive coordinator in John McNulty. What should we expect from the Rutgers offense stylistically? What's it going to look like? Uh, a lot of high balls, a lot of shots taken downfield, and the run game is going to be greatly improved. Uh, we, those are aspects of the offense that we need to change up. Uh, the past couple of years haven't been the best for us um, running the ball or passing the ball. But this year, Coach McNulty is bringing a different type of offense, and we, we, we truly think that it'll work. It starts with the quarterback spot. You guys have a number of players there who have contributed at various points throughout their career. How would you assess the quarterback spot now? Uh, the quarterback room is they're fighting. Um, everybody wants a spot. Uh, guys like Arthur or Gio or John Lewis, they all have a chance to play. Um, it, it really comes down to who can execute the best at the end of the day. Training camp is going to be really fun to watch. How about you personally on the offensive line? You look at these NFL draft watch lists, and you are on a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're someone who the next level guys have their eye on. How do you function through that knowing, hey, e each one of these plays is being so heavily scrutinized. Everything I do is being watched. Uh, I don't really think about it too much. NFL is not really something that I, that's at the, the top of my list right now. Um, one day it will be. But right now I just want to focus on college football and just playing the best I can in my senior year. You guys are in a really difficult division, and we were talking about this with Coach Ash earlier. It might be the best division in college football. As you look at the big picture, how do you think that Rutgers can build the program that can compete at that level and that can give the Ohio States and the Penn States and Michigan States and Michigans a run for their money each year and, and start beating some of them? Um, in terms of that, I think the gap has already closed. I mean, Coach Ash did whatever he can as far as improving facilities, you know, adding to the weight room, things of that nature, preparing us, preparing our bodies with the help of Coach Kenny Parker, you know, doing what he could, you know, to help us as a team get better. So it was about time that, you know, we, we improve, and it's only right that we, you know, award him with the wins that he deserved for the amount of, you know, investment he's been putting in us. Deontay, what's the niche? How, how does Rutgers fit in and, and compete at that level? Uh, you know, like Bless said, you know, I think the gap closed, you know. Um, it's just going out there and competing, you know, like, we, we preach it every day, you know, when we come in, it's competing, uh, going hard, doing the, the, the little things right, you know, because that's what's going to separate you, you know. That's what makes the great teams good, you know what I'm saying? And so you just got to come out there and compete, you know, look for something that you want to work on and continue to work on it. I know every competitor goes out wants to win every single game. So, yeah. I, I mean, to a certain extent, this question has only one answer, right? And it's, it's go undefeated. But that aside, if you were to look back on this season at the end and say it's been a success, what would it look like, Tariq? What, what would a successful season be for Rutgers? Oh, that's, that's, I can't tell you that. We got to win one game at a time first. Uh, at, at the end of the day, it's, it's, the goal is to win the Big Ten East, right? Right. We got to win a certain amount of games. Can you have success without winning the Big Ten East? Could you look back on a season, Deontay, and say, yeah, I think we accomplished some stuff without winning the division? Uh, I feel like um, if we're improving, you know, each and every week, you know, uh, and, and changing the results, you know, at the end of the season, when we look up, it will speak for itself. Bless? I definitely think um, as long as we improve from the year before, we're making steps in the right direction. As far as, as everybody, every program, goal is to win a bowl game and, you know, get to the ultimate games. Of course, Big Ten championship game. But if you can make those strides as a program and, you know, tally up your wins each year, I think, I think you're taking a step in the right direction. All right, guys, real pleasure to visit with the three of you. Blessant Austin, Deontay Roberts, Street Cole. Thanks a lot, guys. Best of luck this year. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. it.